I'm gonna say I'm pretty sure we've got a quorum by now. Not um not, not quite time yet though. So. Well that's good. How many uh, people do we have? You've got 72 people in attendance. Wow. Well, I'll just uh, say a couple of things to everybody before we get started. First of all, congratulations in this trying time, uh, having this opportunity for all of us to get together, even if it is sort of remotely and using some new technology. Uh, in light of that, we're going to uh, going to uh, conduct this meeting a little bit differently than we normally do just to let's say take advantage of the technology but also to be able to be able to have our meeting in some sort of reasonable period of time um, if you haven't noticed uh, you are muted as you're signing in here and uh, you can raise your hand to vote uh, to be recognized to, or to be recognized to speak and uh, Kate Bush is at the controls and she will see you raise your hand and uh, we'll acknowledge you. But we'll still follow the same rules uh, uh, that we do in our meeting when we're doing it face to face as far as recognition. Um, you're, what will happen is that when you're recognized to speak, your microphone will get turned on. And um, Later on, as we're we're voting, uh, will you'll be acknowledged once your vote has been uh, tallied. Mm -hmm. We'll uh, take a roll call here in the beginning, just to see who's here, so we know every all the people who are here. Uh, then uh, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order, and and then we'll move on. There's uh, some uh, there's a need to be able to operate uh, more efficiently in this um, in this particular situation that we're in. So uh, I will ask for unanimous consent as we're going along to uh, change our rules of procedure. And uh, that, uh, that will allow us to, to operate more smoothly. Uh, we, I want to try tonight to when we're recording both votes to uh, record the no votes and the abstentions and in that way we're able to uh, progress more quickly uh, with the voting procedure and then we'll, we'll just assume that anybody who didn't vote no um, or abstained uh, is, uh, is then voting yes and I think that will help us to rather than have to count 60, 70 votes. Um, the other thing we'll do tonight that would be different from our normal rules of procedure would be to combine items 20-2 through 20-9 for one motion and then one vote. That way we wouldn't have to, uh, uh, we wouldn't have to do it um, and, and count every, every uh, vote and, uh, and count every a vote for every item. Um, we'll also uh, ask later on uh, unanimous consent to take no action on 20-11 since the governor's clarified his position and we're going to meet and go ahead and vote our own budget. And uh, we'll add an item 20-14 at the end uh, to establish the budding budget meeting date for the RTM, which will uh, be June 8th. Um, we'll proceed with our agenda as we normally do, just recognizing committee chairs. They give their reports and uh, then we move on to comment and, uh, and voting. And uh, then we'll just go ahead and uh, adjourn uh, as we normally do. So um, with that said, what uh, I do is ask Kate to go ahead and do a roll call so that we know if we have a quorum or not. Okay, um, <clears throat> I am going to go through this. This will sound strange, but alphabetically by first name because that's how you appear in the room. So um, I'm just gonna read them out for Karen to record. I've got Adele Conniff, Amy Barsanti, Amy Chickles, Andrew Millar, Ann Reed, Barry Baldwin, Bert von Stupelnagel, Bill Smith, Brian Rahill, Carolyn Bain, Cassie McSerry, Cecil Wade, Cheryl Block, 
Law, I'm sorry if I mispronounce the name. Cheryl Russell. Clara Sartori, Colin Kelly, Curtis Butler, David Bain, Derek Lublin, Diane Conalog, Edgar Hawkins, Edward Washeka, Elizabeth Bacon, Emily McDermott, Eric Gollis, Frank Edelman, Frank Kemp, Harry McLaughlin, Holly Giordano, Iris Mix, Jack Davis, James Howe, James Patrick, Jamie Zionic, I don't believe is an RTM member, member of the public, Jan Raymond, Jay Hardison, Jennifer Moeller, Jennifer Woodbury, Jenny Schwartz, Jim Cameron, Joan Davis, John Bolton, Kara Bonsack, Karen McNichol, Kenneth Fiveson, Laura Mosher, Linda Terhoon, Lindsay Kelly, Lisa Yarnell, Liza Lucas, Lois Schneider, Lucy Fiore, Louisa Bracken, Caroline McGo McGoey, Marcy Minnick, Marie Handler, Mark Adaletta. I've got Martha with no last name, which I think is Martha Banks, Martha Carolyn Luz, Michael Casolo, Michael Heights, Mike Wheeler, Monica McNally, Olive Hauser, Patrick Kane, Peter Orfanis, Peter Marusik, Rob Warner, Robert Lyons, Rolf Oben, Sandra Savage, Sarah Perrant, Sarah Baldwin, Scott Zimmerman, Shannon Silsby, Sheila Sherwood, Stacy T.A., Sue Ellen Mitchell, Susan Laritzen, Suzanne Handler, Terry Duffer, Duffy, Teresa Vogt, Thomas Moore, Vincent Arguimbaugh, Virginia Gijon Camano, Werner Dometner, William Cusack, William Van Loan. If I didn't call your name and you are here, raise your hand. Uh, we have an urgent thing, Kate, with uh, Jack Davis. He is not, did you pick him up? Is he in the room? I had him in the room. He's looks like he's gone. No, he's still in the room. He says he has no picture. And uh, yeah, he's, I, I'm not sure. I don't know. See, let's see if we can say hello to him or get him to respond. I try uh, turning his um, mic on. Jack, can you hear? Can you speak? I, I can now speak. It, I, I had a sign off and sign in again. Okay. Glad you made it. All right, I'm fine. Thank you. I okay. can, uh, they can take me off the respirator now, Jack? Uh, I didn't care. Uh, my reports were all issued anyway. <laughs> um, I'm glad we got that straightened out. Great. Thank you. Okay, so um, we'll uh, call this uh, meeting of the representative town meeting to order having an agenda. Um, I ask uh, unanimous consent to accept the agenda. Do we have that, Kate? Everyone's unmuted, so they, well. How about they raise their hands if you object? Okay, there are quite a few hands up that need to go down. All right, let me put them down. Yep. Stay down? Not yet. Uh, here. I'm not seeing any. Um, that's interesting. Okay. All right, I think I've gotten rid of them. All 
All right, I think I got rid of the hands. Okay, so raise your hand if you object to the unanimous consent. I don't see any. Okay, uh, I would also ask unanimous consent to approve the minutes of January 27th. If you have any comments, uh, you can uh, get them into uh, Karen Dell and she will make the appropriate adjustments. Okay, are there any <clears throat> objections to the minutes? I'm not seeing any hands. Um, can you tell me Beth, how to... what's the popcorn sound? I don't know. Can somebody tell me how to make it so I can see people? Oh, I see I don't see anyone's hands or anything. Muted. Unmuted. Okay, I don't know who that was. Um, please raise your hand to ask that question again. Jan Raymond. Um, you, you won't be able to see people. You would just be able to see the um, what's on the screen should be the warning of the meeting. And you might see Seth. Seth is the only person with a, a, a webcam that's operational. Okay. Um, Mac Patrick looks like he had a hand raised. I can't unmute him. He's he's got himself muted. Mac, you're going to have to unmute yourself if you want to ask your question. Yeah. The, the, my my question is, um, how do I, as district chair, record votes? Uh, you don't need to. That's We're going to answer. take. Pardon? That's a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what I'm going to ask uh, for um, uh, is uh, two things. Um, one is uh, to suspend our normal rules of procedure for the voting so that we can, can, we can co record the no votes and the abstentions and assume that everybody else voted yes. Um, that allows us to move this along and not have to do a roll call vote for everyone. It's just part of the way the system will work. Uh, and on uh, this first set of items here, uh, which are a, a bunch of things that relate to easements and the money for them, uh, I'm asking that uh, we, you allow me to combine items 20-2 through 20-9 uh, for one motion and one vote. Seth, uh, Seth. Then we have to do a roll call for each one. Yes. Just uh, uh, Jeremy uh, Ginsburg has a comment that um, he he wants to note that the easement for 187 Roten is the, is the is only a temporary easement. All the others are both temporary and permanent. Fine. Um, I, that uh, I don't think um, prevents us from uh, approving the easements and then uh, allowing them to do the necessary work to clean that up so that it's, you know, so that everything's approved. Timing in life. So uh, without objection, if you allow me to do those things, um, I will uh, go ahead and recognize uh, Monica McNally uh, for items 20-2 through 20-9 from Public Works. 
Give me a second, Seth, to get to her. No, Monica, Monica would would move the item, and then it would be seconded. Monica, you want, please unmute yourself. Okay. Okay, Monica, you go ahead. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Monica McNally, Chairman of the RTM Public Works Committee. I move Resolution 20-2 through 20-8, Consideration and Action on Acceptance of Temporary and Permanent Easement over Property Located at 173 Naroten Avenue, 179 Naroten Avenue, 180 Naroten Avenue, 185 Naroten Avenue, 187 Naroten Avenue, 1 Allen O'Neill Drive, and 242 West Avenue. And Resolution 20-9, Consideration and Action on Acceptance of a Grant from the State of Connecticut for the Capital Improvement Program at the intersection of Neuroton and West Avenues in the amount of $1,174,000. Do I have a second? Please raise your hand to second. We have a second. If there are no objections, I move to waive the reading of the resolutions. The seven easements in the resolution are between the town of Darien and various property owners in the vicinity of Neuroton and West, the West intersection. The improvements to the intersection will include two new left turn lanes, one as you head northbound on Neuroton towards Stanford and one on the westbound side of West Avenue. The stop bars will be moved back to help trucks make the turns. The roads will be widened and the sidewalks replaced. There will be new crosswalks and ADA compliant handicap ramps and tactile warning strips. The new traffic signal will be both hand and countdown with audio. The new sidewalk will run from the gas station to the firehouse on Neuroton and will be concrete. The process will begin by submitting the notarized easement acquisition documents and final design plans to the Department of Transportation. They will review and comment if needed. Um, this could take one to two months. The public department, the public works department will bid out the project and hire the low bid contractor subject to approval from the state and the work will begin. Projects expected to take four to six months to complete. The town hired an appraiser who detailed and finalized reports on each property based on recent sales, land value per square foot, and if the easement was permanent or temporary for the duration of the road construction. The town and property owners reached an agreement on the value of the easements ranging from $1,000 to $21,000, totaling $63,932. These payments will be made from the Local Transportation Capital Improvement Program, or LOTSIP, the grant which is funding the improvement project. Approval of Resolution 20-9 will allow the town to spend funds once they are received from the Department of Transportation to pay off the easement acquisitions and begin construction. No payments will be made until the grant is awarded and received. The RTM Public Works Committee met on April 14th with 10 of 12 members present and voted unanimously in favor of both resolutions and recommends the same to the full RTM. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Uh, next for public health and safety, Mac Patrick. Am I unmuted? You are. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, the RTM Public Health and Safety Committee met jointly with the RTM Finance and Budget Committee and the RTM Public Works Committee on March 4th, 2020 with 12 of 17 members present. Jeremy Ginsburg presented information on the easements relating to improving traffic flow at the intersections. Crosswalks are to be installed at the intersection for added pedestrian safety. The amount to be paid to the property owners by the town is approximately 64,000, as Monica mentioned. Uh, and, and will be reimbursed by the DOT. The Public Health and Safety Committee voted on and unanimously approved all seven easement resolutions and requested the full RTM do the same. Now on resolution 29, 20-9, um, we did not actually take a vote on that because at the, at the time of that joint meeting, um, it, it had not really been finalized about the gift. So we did actually not vote on it that night, but it's my sense as chairman that we would approve it. Um, 
and and I would ask that the, the full RTM approve it as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mac. Um, Next, uh, Amy Barsanti for planning, zoning, and housing. Give me a second. Amy, you are unmuted. Okay, thank you. I'm Amy Barsanti, Chairman of the RTM Planning, Zoning, and Housing Committee. The committee also met on March 4th with eight of 13 members present to address resolutions 20-2 through 20-8. Again, it was a joint meeting with public health and safety, Finance and Budget and Public Works. Um, in addition, the committee also met on April 23rd with 10 of 13 members present in a virtual meeting to address Resolution 20-9. Uh, the Board of Selectmen approved the state grant at their meeting on April 6th. The Planning Zoning Commission issued a favorable, favorable report indicating that the project was consistent with the 2010 town plan at their April 10th commission meeting, and the Board of Finance approved the appropriation to spend the funds at their April 14th meeting. Um, the Planning, Zoning, and Housing Committee at both meetings of March 4th and 23rd voted unanimously to approve the grant and necessary easements and recommends the same to the full RTM. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, for Finance and Budget, Jack Davis. Before I give my report, I do have a question to Wayne if he is on the line. Um, should we be amending the location that was mentioned by Jeremy to say solely temporary, or does it matter if it says temporary and permanent? The document itself makes a point of the fact that that, that, that one is just temporary, so there's no need to change anything. It was misstated in the call. Okay, fine, then I can give the report. Um, Jack Davis, Chairman of F&B. Um, the committee met on March 4th with 12 of 17 members. Um, in addition to public health and safety, planning and zoning and public works. Um, the committee also met on April 20th with 15 of 17 members present to address the final resolution. Um, all the numbers have been mentioned, so all I'll say is that in both uh, meetings, we voted unanimously to approve the grant and the easements and recommend the same to the full RTM. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Are there any other committees that uh, would like to report? Raise your hand if you need to report. I see none. Seth? Okay. Uh, town officials? Any town officials that would like to have a word? Looks like none. I'm seeing none. Okay. Um, members of the RTM? I see no hands raised. Great. In that case, uh, peers, we're ready to vote. Um, all those abstaining, please. Raise your hand. Raise your hand, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm getting no hands raised. Uh, no votes, please. And again, I'm seeing no hands. Great, uh, then the item passes unanimously. Next is 20-10 uh, and uh, consideration and action on the acceptance of a gift to the uh, Darien Police Department. Speaking for Public Health and Safety, Mac Patrick. Hi, I'm Mac Patrick, uh, Chairman of Public Health and Safety. I move resolution 20 Dash 10, consideration and action on the acceptance of a gift to the Darien Police Department from the Darien Foundation in the amount of $109,091. Do I have a second? I see hands raised. 
Great. You have a second. Um, without objection, I, I will waive the reading of the resolution. I see the no March, objections. Okay, great. At, at the March 4th, 2020 um, joint meeting, public health and safety members heard a detailed presentation by Captain Robert Shredders. He discussed the importance of shooting training simulators to aid Darien officers with regard to enhancing the level of service and protection afforded the public. The goal is to inoculate officers with stress through realistic training in the hope that it will prepare them for a deadly encounter where proper judgment is paramount. Captain Shredders noted the current system in place called PRISM is out of business and the product is unsupported. Laser shot will enhance the officer's situational awareness and the ability to decipher reliable threat cues. The FARO laser scanner is a portable scanner that provides fast and accurate measurements of indoor or outdoor scenes. It can be used in all types of weather conditions and extreme temperatures. It captures detailed imagery quickly at a distance of 70 meters. Processing time of an accident or crime scene can be reduced to less than one hour. In addition, the unit can be used to enhance school and public safety as well. This will allow officers to map all schools and public facilities to provide a training tool to better prepare staff and officers when responding to crit critical situations. The Public Health and Safety Committee voted unanimously to accept the proposed gift from the Darien Foundation, and we recommend that the full RTM do the same. Thank you. Thanks, Mac. Next for Public Works, Monica McNally. Uh, just a second. Thank Go ahead, you, Monica. Doing a great job, Kate. Monica, you're unmuted. Okay, Seth, I'm not. We uh, remember at the rules meeting. I'm not. I'm not secondary on that. Oh, all right. Um, Jack. Then, Jack yeah. Is. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Jack. I have. I have Jack next. Okay. Well, Jack's here. Um, okay. Jack Davis, chairman of the F and B committee, met on March fourth in a joint meeting with the RTM public health and safety meeting. Uh, Mac did an excellent job explaining the capabilities of both. All I'll say is that the laser shot judgment training simulator costs approximately 55,376, and the Faro laser scanning unit costs 53,715. The police department was excellent in um, providing in additional expenses that would be incurred associated with this as well as what the potential ongoing maintenance was. Um, all those were detailed in the reports that I sent to the full RTM. Um, at that meeting on March uh, 14th, the F&B committee voted unanimously to approve this gift and recommends the same to the full RTM. We'd also like to thank the Darien Foundation for the generous gift and the continued support of many of the Darien related initiatives. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Uh, are there any other committees? I see no hands raised. Uh, town officials? Not seeing any. Uh, members of the RTM? I'm seeing no hands raised. Okay, sounds like uh, we're ready to vote. Uh, those abstaining, please. Got no hands raised. Okay, uh, no votes, please. Again, no hands raised. Great. The item then passes unanimously. Thank you very much. That's uh, terrific. Um, on uh, Item 20-11, uh, I'm asking for unanimous consent to take no action in light of the governor's clarification of his executive order 7-I. If that's okay with you, we will move on to uh, uh, item 20-I. Uh, uh, um, uh, yes. Have, we have a hand raised. I'm looking for it. Got it. 
Got it. All right, Seth. Yeah. This is Jay Hardison. Yes, Jay. I, I'm opposed to unanimous consent on 20-11, only because I think we need to discuss it. And, I, and for some reason, I thought it was uh, the F&B report was going to be read at the meeting as well. Um, it's a uh, it's a moot point. There's there's nothing to discuss. Uh, the item was clarified by the, uh, the governor, and uh, it's there's nothing to vote on and nothing to discuss about it. It's done, and we're going to go on and vote uh, the town budget. Well, there's, if I if I if I can still speak, uh, yeah, the RTM needs to understand how this happened and the fact that town council basically did not represent our interest uh, in this whole matter. And at the very least, I think we need to discuss getting a separate council for the RTM because we. Uh, Jay, that's not what's on the agenda. That's not the item on the agenda. And uh, it uh, the the uh, item on the agenda is no longer relevant. So I, Seth, I understand. On I that I, ruling is uh, is out of order. Well, you asked for unanimous consent. I'm not unanimous in consenting. Well, in that case, uh, then we would have to uh, have uh, um, a, a motion to. Um, I, I I can't. Uh, it's it's an item that uh, is no longer um, relevant. So I don't I, know. There's I, nothing. I, there's nothing to vote on. I understand the point, but absent Stacy Ty, this may have happened anyway without any clarification from the governor. And, and thank God for her efforts. That, for, for I understand, but that's irrelevant. Uh, this is uh, this item is not an item to take action on. There's nothing to take action on, and there's nothing to vote on. It's a moot point. So I, all I'm saying, Seth, is we need to understand yeah. why and how this happened. Maybe that's not for this meeting. You'd, you'd have to do that in a in a different venue. I can't speak for the governor, obviously, and neither can anybody else here. So I, you know, uh, the only thing we can do is uh, is move forward ourselves in our normal manner and vote on the budget. Uh, uh, as, as far as I'm concerned, uh, there's no real action to be taken. All right. Thank you. So, So uh, we will move to, uh, and and I I will uh, open. I'm open to hearing from town council, but uh, I think this is a moot count, a moot point. I think nothing from council. We'll move on to. Uh, the next one, which is 20-12, consideration action on a gift to Channel 79 from the Darien Foundation. And uh, that would be um, Jack. Jack, Jack Davis, Finance and Budget. I'm Jack Davis, Chairman of the RTM Finance and Budget Committee. I move resolution 20-12, consideration and action on a gift to Channel 79 from the Darien Foundation in the amount of 50,768. Do I have a second? I see you have a second. If there are no objections, I move to waive the reading of the resolution. The RTM committee discussed this generous gift from the Darianne Foundation to Channel 79 at April 20th with 15 of 17 members present on a virtual meeting. Mike Wheeler was also present acting in his capacity as chairman of the Darianne uh, TV 79 Advisory Board. This gift provides A, an up to the server platform, and B, complete placement of all cameras at Town Hall. All bills associated with this gift will be paid directly by the Darien Foundation. Background. Channel 79 initially covered three to four meetings a week and has an excess of 100 hours per year from multiple locations within Town Hall and in the field. The technology used at inception records meetings to hard disks that are subsequently edited and burned onto DVDs. The weekly programs to be viewed on Channel 79 is six, although meetings are available on the Vimeo platform. The existing platform is time-consuming, has limited availability 
of replacement parts, limits cable programs of meetings, and is old technology. In addition, several rooms included in uh, the auditorium where we would typically be meeting if it wasn't virtual, um, are, as well as room um, 213, I believe, um, need replacement of cameras that are 12 years old. This aspect of the gift will complete the replacement of all meeting room cameras and field equipment. The gift will install a server-based system from the CASIS um, TV platform. This platform is used by over 400 municipalities as well as the Darien Board of Education. It enhances the platform's capabilities, including remote broadcasts from both the Darien Police Department and the Darien Library with micro hookup system. It eliminates the need to burn DVDs and allows remote post-production and scheduling, which many of us have done as people are working remote. The system for this aspect costs 33268 The second part of this gift replaces the three pan-zoom tilt cameras in the auditorium and another in room 213 in Town Hall. Total cost of cameras, switcher, and installation is $17,500, which totals the $50,768. The F&B committee at its April 20th meeting voted unanimously to approve this gift and recommends the same to the full RTM. The committee also wants to thank this Channel 79 crew for all the work that they do to support our town government and its transparency, as well as yet another generous gift from the Darien Foundation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jack. Um, other uh, committees? I don't see any. Okay, town officials? Not seeing any. Okay, uh, members of the RTM? None. Okay, we're ready to vote. Um, those uh, abstaining, please. I see none. Uh, those voting no, please. None. The item passes unanimously. Congratulations. Next item, uh, Jack, you're popular tonight, 12-13, uh, consideration action on the gift to channel. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. 20-13 tax, tax deferral. There we go. Fine. I'm Jack Davis, chairman of the RTM Finance and Budget Committee. I move 20-13 resolution of the representative town meeting of the town of Darien to establish a program to provide relief and support to eligible businesses, nonprofits, and residents who may have been economically affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Do I hear a second? You have seconds. Thank you. There's no objections to reading most of the resolution, but I read the last part, which reads, now for be it resolved that the town of Darien, through its legislative hereby approve said deferment program with eligibility criteria established by the Office of Policy and Management. The F&B committee met virtually on April 20th with 16 or 17 members present. Kate Bush, town um, administrator, was also in attendance. And I'd like to hear, stop here and thank Kate for all the work she's been doing in helping our committees and boards meet virtually. I can promise this was never part of her job description, and I believe that Kate has done an outstanding job facilitating our meetings. The best starting point for this resolution is the Governor's Executive Order 7S, Item 6, Suspension of Modification of Tax Deadlines and Collection Efforts. Um, and I'm just going to do a quick summary. Uh, there are two programs known as a Deferment Program and a Low Interest Program were presented in this executive order. Each municipality is as defined in CGSA 7-148 by determination of its lo local legislative body, and the RTM, 
shall participate in one or both of the programs and notify the Secretary of the Office of Policy and Matter no later than April 25th. Hence, you might realize that we're not meeting on the 25th, as today is the 27th. Keith Bush and I can, um, conferred upon realizing that the RTM was meeting late after this date, and due to the excellent work of Kate through her contacts as chair of an OPM working group, and Jamie Stevenson, our first selectman, through her contacts in the state, last week the town of Darien received an extension to notify OPM secretary to April 29th, thus avoiding a special RTM meeting last week. Under the deferment program, there were two options, to offer to eligible taxpayers that have been financially affected by COVID-19 pandemic, or B, offer the deferment to all taxpayers. The Office of Policy and Management is tasked with establishing the guidance for meeting eligibility for taxpayers, businesses, nonprofits, and residents. What does the deferment program offer? During the period March 10th through April, I'm sorry, July 1st, 2020, a deferment by 90 days of any taxes on real estate property, personal property, or motor vehicles, or municipal water, sewer, or electric rates, or assessment of such tax rate, charge, or assessment from the time it became due and payable. Those identified as eligible must attest to or document significant economic impact by COVID-19 and or those that document they are providing relief to those significantly affected by COVID-19. This is a program that the Board of Selectmen approved in their last meeting, which is not was not noted in the whereas because it happened after this resolution was written, and is recommended by the Board of Finance to the RTM, as the Board of Finance was not required, uh, required by the EO to vote. The second program was a low interest rate program reducing the interest rate from 1.5% per month or 18% per annum to 25 basis points, which is a quarter of 1% or 3% annualized rate for the period of 90 days. After the 90-day period ending October 1, 2020, the rate and penalties for any delinquent taxes would return to the previous rates and penalties prior to the deferral. Landlords or any taxpayer that rents or leases to any commercial, residential, or institutional tenant would be eligible providing the landlord or taxpayer can document significant income decline or forbearance was offered to tenants. To qualify for the low interest rate program, such landlords or taxpayers, as described above, must have offered forbearance to their tenants. Escrow payments held by financial institutions or mortgage services on behalf of a borrower shall continue to remit property taxes to the municipality so long as the borrower remains current on their mortgage or is in a forbearance or deferment program by the financial institution or mortgage services, irrespective of the borrower's eligibility for participation in the two programs offered above by Executive Order 7S. As per town analysis, approximately 30% of the town's tax revenues are in fact paid by escrow. And simply put, nothing in this Executive Order 7S affects any provisions of the Connecticut General Statutes to record liens or the like. Significant analysis was performed by the town administrator and the director of finance, analyzing cash flows both in and out through December 2020. The options mentioned above where each calculated a map as it was known payments for debt, pension, and other expenses based upon the budgets as presented to the Board of Finance prior to the March 10th date noted in this EO. This analysis is included in the Board of Selectmen's meeting packet dated April 21st, 2020, if one wishes to review. And I sent the link to everybody prior to this meeting. The town has reserves and is in good standing. That being said, it was decided that the best step to address providing some relief to those that needed relief, and it is expected that some of the town's commercial properties might apply for such deferral, was to offer the deferral to those who qualified under the guidelines as prescribed by the Secretary of the Office of Policy and Management. The town tax collector will have to sign off on any request for a deferral once approved. 
The FMB committee at its April 20th meeting voted unanimously, 16 in favor, none against, no abstention, to recommend that the full RTM that the Town of Darien's legislative body, the RTM as prescribed in EO7S, establish a tax deferral program to provide relief and support to eligible taxpayers, businesses, nonprofits, and residents who may have been economically affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, whose eligibility criteria will be established by the Connecticut Office of Policy and Management. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Uh, nice job. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Jamie Stevenson, who uh, went to a, a lot of effort to, to make sure that we got this thing approved in time so that we could uh, vote this on the 27th and uh, not run into the issue of having to reschedule for the 25th. That's great. Um, are there any other committees that uh, wish to report? Uh, town officials? Okay. Members of the RTM? Don't have anybody. All right, All right. Uh, ready to vote. Uh, abstentions, please. I see none. Uh, no votes, please. I see none. Uh, the item passes unanimously. This is a, a great thing and uh, congratulations to the RTM. Uh, now what I'd like to do without objection is add uh, item 20-14 to our agenda, which uh, sets the budget date for the RTM to uh, vote on the town budget to at uh, June 8th. Um, without objection, um, I would accept a motion in favor of that. Um, Lois? Um. I see Lisa Yarnell making a motion. Okay. Second, please. Oh, you have a whole bunch of seconds. Oh, okay. Um, wonderful. We we don't uh, have a report. It's just a simple setting the uh, budget for June 8th, which fits in with the uh, Board of Finance schedule for approving the budget and uh, gives us enough time to have uh, committee meetings uh, to report out on the budget. So. Uh, June yeah, I think we have, so we have a uh, question. Those, excuse me. We have a question. Okay. Uh, Rolf Oben, go ahead. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I uh, hit the button by mistake. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so um, that's great. Uh, we're ready to vote. Good. Uh, no votes, please. Got that out of order. Excuse me. Abstentions, please. I do not see any. No votes, please. Again, I see none. Uh, passes uh, unanimously. Uh, congratulations. Um, I do want to uh, thank uh, Kate Bush for an, a lot of time to organize all this and uh, to run the uh, application so smoothly because it's not an easy thing. Uh, it's Definitely. one thing to conduct meetings, but I, I just want to thank her uh, and uh, also Cecil Wade for, for peach, pitching in and making this thing uh, run well for us. Uh, they've just done an outstanding job. Um, so um, I will uh, accept a motion to adjourn. Uh, you have it from Jan Raymond. Ah, thank you, Jan. And uh, second, please. And you have multiple seconds. Okay, all those in favor, sign off. <laughs>